Hey, so we're down here at Play Try in Sarasota, Florida, where we're going to test the brand new BMC Speed Machine 01. This is a really great bike. Let's go inside, we'll take a look at the bike, then we'll take it out and do some testing. So let's take a look at this F1 Inspired Machine. This bike was built by BMC, which is a Swiss company who, in conjunction with the F1 team Red Bull, put this thing through its tests and development. There's a lot of F1 inspired aerodynamics on this bike. Let's take a look at this premium carbon bike with its internal cable routing and F1 aero inspired wide fork and center diffuser designed to move the air around the wheel, rider, and center post. Its cockpit is flat with very adjustable stack height using the profile design ultimate bars with ergo armrests and 4525 SLE extensions. The bike is equipped with DT Swiss 1650 hubs, 62 millimeter tubeless ready carbon wheels and Pirelli P0 26 millimeter tires, but the bike can easily fit 30 millimeter tires. Most bikes come with off the rack seats, but not this one. It comes equipped with the Physics Transirio Aris R5 Split Front Triathlon Saddle. The hydration system is easily removed for cleaning and when removed, this bike becomes an ICU time trial legal speedster. The drivetrain is SRAM Force ETAP electronic shifting with dual side power meter. 4535 front gearing connected to the SRAM Force XG1270 12 speed 1030 cassette via the Force flat top chain. A slick little detail on this bike is the removable rear toolbox with integrated aero rear light. Last but not least is the SRAM S900 aero disc brake system with 160 millimeter center lock disc brakes front and rear. I'm really hoping that the smooth aero lines and the stiff BMC frame make for a great ride. Let's go find out. So, after a few minor technical difficulties, we're finally ready to get this thing going. What we're going to do is we're going to ride one lap around this lake, 3.4 miles at Benderson Park, and ride that as close to 150 watts as possible. After that, we will rest it out just a little, and then I'm going to go for an all-out time trial lap around the lake, and we'll compare the two. Using 150 watts, that's what most people can do for an extended period of time. So. Here we go. Got what it takes, made lots of mistakes, taking shots, skipping breaks, feeling lost, feeling great, popping off, singing straight, never stop, never changed. All the squad here to play, and I've got something to say, yeah. I work hard each and every day. Hello, I just finished the 150 watt lap. I gotta tell you, it was like trying to keep a caged lion in place. Uh, it was, this, this bike is not designed to go really slow, but I'll tell you what, I'm falling in love with this thing. The handling is amazing. I have to say, this bike is is for real, folks. Uh, we'll see what happens now. We're going to head out on the all-out time trial. Absolutely no look at any electronics whatsoever. I'm just going to go as hard as I feel safe and see what the difference is in wattage and in speed. I won't stop till I hear him say... So this is the part you guys have been waiting for, the numbers. But before we do that, if you're getting value from this video, drop down below, give me a thumbs up, hit subscribe, make sure you ring that notification bell to get more videos on more different bikes that we're gonna be testing. Thank you to Playtry in Sarasota for the opportunity to do this. I have up on the screen the chart showing the 150 watt lap. Taking a look at the numbers, it was a very difficult bike to keep at 150 watts. This bike really wanted to go. It wanted to take off, it wanted to go hard all the time, but I did get it in at 148 watts, giving me an average speed of 18.1 miles per hour. That was with a major headwind. The time I got, 11 minutes and 40 seconds for the 3.47 mile loop. 
Average heart rate, 130 beats per minute. My thoughts on the bike at 150 watts, this is a great bike. It uh, took the headwind really, really well. It took the sidewinds really, really well. The bike is a good bike for an entry level person, but is it an entry level bike? We'll take a look at the price later on. That's not the only thing we're testing. We did the all out time trial. This was a really, really fun bike to ride on the all out time trial. I felt very stable, very aero. The bike flowed well. It just really felt really, really nice. I was able to generate 237 average watts on that loop, which surprised me. It really felt good. It really felt fast. It never felt like it was drawing me down as I was hitting the headwind section. It felt like it was slicing through with a knife. This was 89 watts, more than 150 watt lap, 40% more wattage and the same distance. Speed, 22.4 miles per hour. Average, that's 4.3 miles per hour more. Took a time of nine minutes, 18 seconds, or two minutes, 22 seconds less, 20% less time to make that loop. Average heart rate, 154 beats per minute. For you heart rate people, over power people, I was putting out 16% more body energy to generate 40% more watts. Very efficient bike. What did I feel on that lap? Well, this bike loves power. The more power you put to it, the more it responds, the faster it goes. Everything that they designed with the F1 aerodynamics really worked. I really, truly didn't feel air pushing against my legs, the wider forks, pulls that air to go around my body better. I think that's where I got so much more speed out of the bike than other bikes I've tested on that loop. The bike itself only comes in small, medium, and large, but is very flexible as far as how much adjustment it has in the bike. And it is only available in one color. Neon red with carbon black, people. That is a really cool looking bike. How am I gonna rate the BMC Speed Machine 012? I rate my bikes in seven different categories and I will come up with this chart right here to tell you if it's highly recommended, recommended, a good value, a bad value, or just plain junk. So. Here we go on the final analysis. First, let's talk about the intangibles. The Speed Machine 012 has a fueling system that comes off and is very easily cleaned. And when it's taken off, this bike becomes UCI legal time trial. One bike, two disciplines, no problem. The other intangible about this bike, take it out of the box, take it to the race, go racing. So, in intangibles, what does it rank? I give it an eight out of 10. The wheel set, DT Swiss wheel set, consumer level, good wheel set, nothing to write home about, solid six on that one. Weight, very light triathlon slash UCI legal. Time trial bike, eight out of 10 folks. Handling, I'm gonna tell you, you buy this bike, if you're gonna put this investment in the bike, take it immediately to a qualified triathlon bike fitter. This will take the handling up a notch. But as far as I'm concerned, handling on this bike is amazing. I was able to take the turns and a sweeping turn, if I take it on my bike, it kind of pushes. This bike snapped around every corner. I love the handling of this bike. 8.5 out of 10. Next is climbing. All I have on this loop are two humps that represent a nice rolling hill setup. I was able to get up off the seat, onto the pedals, dance up the hills, really, really nice. It didn't have any problems. I didn't feel uncomfortable out of position when I was trying to climb out of the seat or when I was in the seat. It puts the power to the ground, gets over the hills nice. I'm gonna give this a good solid six, which is pretty darn good for a triathlon bike. Components it comes with, SRAM, two by 12, Everything good, no questions about that right there. Works great, eight out of 10. Braking, solid nine out of 10. Stops on a dime, 
what are you going to have to come off of to buy this bike? Check out this video right here on the Argon E118 tri bike, and the cost is $10,999. This is an expensive bike, but it works. Would I buy it? Oh my gosh, this thing is awesome. This bike is so bad. Oh my. Uh, sell, the, uh, sell the portfolio, sell the children, whatever you gotta do. This thing is the, is the bomb. This is Coach John. Boom.